What's up guys, in today's video I want to show you how to properly cluster detail in your designs. This is the number one thing people miss on. It's very important, you don't want to skip it, and if you don't use this principle in your designs, they're going to look very boring, very monotone, and they're not going to stand out amongst the crowd. A lot of beginners and intermediates run into this problem because we as humans are very naturally inclined to scatter detail everywhere and also keep things very monotone, very even. This is a very natural um, aptitude, is that the word? I don't know. It's a very natural conditioning we have as human beings and I want to show you guys how to break free from that and make your designs 10 times better. Now I know we have a lot of new people constantly coming to the channel so if you are new and you're new to hard surface modeling we do have a completely free um, hard surface modeling design course you can pick that up on our website if you want to get started and also if you're not subscribed please subscribe to the channel a lot of you guys aren't subscribed I have statistics right here and you're gonna miss cool videos, so make sure you do that. Anyways, what I wanna show you guys here is a very easy way to understand this stuff, okay? So what I'm gonna do is start with a cylinder because I think a cylinder is gonna be the best example. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll just make this like 100 vertices because why not make it nice and smooth? And let's just kind of um, make this a bit smaller. So we're just going to use a very basic cylinder here, okay? Now this is the only thing I want you guys to remember. 70, 30. 70, 30. Keep repeating that in your head. Most people are doing 50, 50. No more after this video, okay? There's, there's situations where it's permitted, don't get me wrong, but in general, when you're making designs, I always want you subconsciously to think 70, 30. Now, what does this mean? You've probably heard of this principle before. You want to have 70% of, um, usually what I do is I like to have most of the area empty space. So 70% of my model will have empty space. And then the 30% will have clusters of detail. This is what kind of differentiates that model that gives you the wow factor from the model that just kind of is like, eh, kind of boring, right? And I'm going to show you an example. I'll have my editor put this up on the screen. I made this ship recently, a very sub D organic shape. You're going to see I use this exact principle in this design. I have a lot of empty space on the ship and about 30% of the ship has a lot of clusters of different detail. And a lot of people tend to think empty space is bad, but it's actually very powerful. If I scattered that ship with all sorts of different detail and didn't leave any empty space for the eyes to rest on the important areas, it would have no visual appeal to it. So this is what I really want you guys to focus on because the number one thing I struggle with when I first started was I, um, I put detail all over the place. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna even send my editor a picture of one of my old designs and this is literally what I did. I put detail all over the place because I thought empty space was bad. It's not. Um, so basically, what I want to show you here with the cylinder is I want to show you how we could use that. So a lot of beginners, like I said, would be going 50-50. They'd be very monotone, keeping things very even, kind of like this. So if they were to make a little detail, it would be, you know, more or less the same size on all the different positions. There's, it's very, very even. So instead what we could do to kind of enhance the shape is we could focus this on the lower 30%. So what I could do, maybe move this edge down, bevel right here, scale, and do something like this. Maybe I'll even move this in just a little bit. You can always play with these shapes, guys, just kind of trial and error, but this is kind of more of the effect you want. Now there are exceptions to the rules. I'm not trying to say this is some all-encompassing rule that can never be broken. Of course it can be broken. But um, as a general guideline, this is the approach you want to make. We could even enhance this even more because right now we still have even sized um, one segment bevels right here. So what we could do to even enhance this more, let me show you. So say I came in here and I beveled this area. I just use the same size bevel on the same size chamfer, right? This is kind of what we have. Looks okay, not too exciting, but check this out. 
What if instead I moved this edge over a little bit more to kind of make this a bit longer while this is a bit shorter, and then I made a higher bevel on this one, a smaller bevel on this one, and then maybe here I could just do the same size, that's fine. Look at how much more interesting this begins to look, right? Maybe that was a little bit too far, maybe I could have pulled that back just a bit. But this is a lot more powerful because we're not using the same monotone shape. So we're actually giving this a little bit of, um, you know, interest to it, making it more dynamic, making it more exciting, really. And this is the kind of approach I love to take on my models because when I'm kind of diversifying things and also using 7030, you can get some really powerful looking shapes. So let's do the same thing. Um, on top of this, you can stack the idea of detail clustering, which is basically where you have a high concentration of detail in one area and a lot of empty space in another. This is, these um, philosophies kind of go hand in hand. And you just have to practice this, guys, and it eventually becomes very intuitive. So let's go over here. And once again, instead of making this straight in the center, what we could do, maybe bias it a little bit. Maybe move that down a little, and then we could go in here and then just make another cool shape on the inside, right? Kind of move that over. Can move this over again. Give that a nice bevel. Doesn't have to be super big. And you can play with the different shapes of bevels. Eventually you'll just kind of be able to feel it. Then we'll go here, bevel that. And look at this guys, look at how much cooler these shapes begin to look when you're not keeping things super even. Now let's say I did keep this even, I was a complete beginner and I wasn't really familiar with these principles and I chose to keep this even. Let's see how much different this would look. We're gonna go ahead and do the same exact thing, but this time we're gonna keep everything even. I wanna show you guys the difference. So let me just make this more or less the same size, kind of scale that, and then we'll move this one over here. So if I made this entire thing even, I'm just gonna do it real quick. Just do some quick modeling. We'll do something like this, right? And we'll do something like this. And this is basically the same idea, but this time we're keeping it, like I said, completely even. And then we're gonna even keep the bevels even. Let's go in here, take these edges, bevel them. So we use the same exact idea. This time we just kept the entire thing even. The sizes are even, the bevels are the same size. Look at the difference here. This one is a lot more powerful and more visually appealing because our eyes are able to rest on the area of concentrated detail and we're able to use this empty space here on the top to kind of give a lot more power to the model. It's very intuitive, so I hope this is kind of making sense intuitively to you. It's not something that you can easily teach. It's something you have to feel. Look at the difference here, guys. Once again, we use the same exact philosophy, same exact shape, same exact everything, except in this one, we used a more beginner technique of keeping things very even, very 50-50, and here we did more or less a 70-30, more concentrated, more diversified, more dynamic, right? And this is the exact approach I really want you guys to begin taking with your models, because if you can focus on this one idea, just this one, your models are gonna be 10 times better, I promise you. There's so many other visual design techniques out there, but if there's a one thing I encourage you to focus on, it is this. And your models overnight, I kid you not, in the next day, if you just use this one principle, everything is gonna look so much better, okay? I don't wanna drag this video on too long. This hopefully makes sense to you intuitively. I really want you guys to be able to feel this out because it's important, so. Next time you're making a model, whenever you're you know, putting in detail and you're thinking, where should I put it? Once again, try to cluster detail on one end and try to not keep things so even. It's gonna make your model a lot more dynamic and a lot more powerful and visually appealing. So if you have any input, if you have any additional um, philosophies you'd like me to discuss or just you know ones you use yourself, feel free to comment below. I'd love to hear what you guys think. And uh, I hope this video kind of gave you a little bit of an enlightenment to 3D and hard surface modeling, and you can use these in your own projects. So thanks so much for watching, guys. See you in the next video.